Hi, it's Sandy Wiley. Welcome to my mental health channel, where I wipe away the stigma of mental illness by talking about my own personal struggles, having borderline personality disorder, having post-traumatic stress disorder. I talk about my anxiety and panic attacks, my depression. I talk about narcissism and my narcissistic mother who abused me. I talk about schizophrenia. And I wrote a book about schizophrenia, Life with My Schizophrenic Father. Um, the link to that book that's available on Amazon is down below in the details. Um, I talk about my unethical psychologist that sexually abused me. And I have links to those books, there's several of them. And the links to them are down below in the details. They're all available on Amazon, including all my poetry books. And I talk about, um, I have inspirational videos, motivational videos, and just a plethora of mental health related topics. Good for the soul, chicken soup for the soul. But I only come on as a former patient of almost 20 years. I am not a licensed therapist. I do not hold a degree in psychology, so I cannot diagnose you. All I ask in return of you is please be kind to me, be respectful and kind to everyone that comments. We don't need to agree on everything. Variety is a spice of life, but we always need to show each other respect and kindness. Now, if you are new to my channel, welcome, welcome. Stick around, take a chance. Hit that subscribe button on the lower right hand corner right there so that way you'll be notified every time a new video of mine comes out it's a hundred percent free like it share it with your friends and family share it on your social media platforms let's spread the love please feel free to share your struggles with me your opinions with me um, I always answer all the comments back so let's build a community of friends and let's spread the love now today's video is a little more inspirational video um, oh. <laughs> i get hair sticking to my lips i hate when that happens how i got my shit together that's right folks I'm going to tell you, I mean, I don't have all my shit together, but um, I've come a long, long way, baby. <laughs> you know that cigarette? I'm not endorsing cigarettes, but this is how I got my shit together. And two simple steps. So I'm not going to bore you with a very long video of like, you know, seven steps, ten steps of how to do this 12-step program. No. I'm going to tell you how I got my shit together in two simple steps. And if I can do it, you can do it. The first thing is don't tell everybody what you're going to do. So if you plan to lose weight, I lost over 60 pounds, over 60. Um, I didn't tell anyone I was going to do it. If you plan to quit smoking, don't tell everyone that. Um, if you, even if you ha plan to have a baby, don't go telling everyone that. This is how I learned the hard way not to open up my big fat mouth. <laughs> I know I do now on my YouTube channel because I want to help people in similar, in similar situations. But back then before I had a YouTube channel, um, I found out the hard way that it was very harmful to me to share things with people. And I'm gonna tell you why not to share um, what you're trying to do with anyone until you succeed at it all right then you can share don't tell them you're trying to lose weight all right show them when they say hey you are looking good lately what happened don't tell them you're gonna get that job wait till you get it don't tell them you, you get the point right I was very excited after I got pregnant um, I didn't get pregnant easily. It took me years to get pregnant. I, um, my metabolism was different back then. I didn't ovulate every month. In fact, I went several months without ovulating. No ovulation, no egg, no pregnancy, 
right? You need an egg and you need a sperm. <laughs> and how many had had? You know how many times I had sex with my husband and he had tons and tons of sperm because he got tested. And the doctor said, blast off, rocket into space. My husband was loaded, loaded in sperm. Now, if I don't have an egg every time we have sex and deposit sperm in my vagina, no baby. And I would go months and months and months not ovulating. I don't know. I went to fertility doctors, da 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 da. So I went to the fertility doctor and he said, you probably just need some clomiphene, all right? Clomiphene is a fertility drug. It stimulates you to ovulate for women. So it was originally invented as a birth control pill, which later on it turned out to be a birth control pill for me. But that's other videos. You can watch those. I took a half of clomiphene pill. That's all I did, and I had sex with my husband as normal, and bam, I got pregnant. Well, I was so friggin' excited, because it took me years to get pregnant, and this one little pill, even, it was a half a pill, it wasn't even the whole pill, instantly did the trick. So I went around and I told everyone, I probably told people in the grocery store. <laughs> I mean, I told everyone i told every friends because i had friends back then i have no friends now you know you've seen the videos but i had friends back then um people i used to work with um family um, in-laws outlaws <laughs> just about everyone neighbors i mean i was like psyched psychedelic okay i was psyched uh, after trying for years and really wanting to have a baby i bought a bassinet I painted a, a room for the baby and I bought clothes and toys, the whole nine yards. But what happened was I miscarried. Spontaneous miscarriage, it happens to like one in four women, it's a very high rate. Now all those people I told that I was going to have a baby, I had to tell that I wasn't having a baby. You see, if I had never said anything, that's why most people will not tell anyone they're pregnant until after the first trimester is over. Because most miscarriages happen in the first trimester. I was in the first trimester. And I mean, I told people as soon as I found out, as soon as that pregnancy test, when I, as soon as my urine fell on that pregnancy test, and it came back, that stick said positive, I was telling the world. And now I had to tell the world what a failure I was. You know, that I lost the baby. And that was, that added so much pain to what, to what I was going through already, that if I had just shut my big fat mouth and not had said anything, I could have not, it could have, you know, it just would have made it better. It just turned a bad situation into a much, much worse situation. You get what I'm saying? And so this is why I'm using this example of if you're making a step, right? You're getting your shit together, you're gonna lose weight, or you're gonna go back to you know school and you're applying for colleges, or you're trying to get that job or that promotion, you're trying to get that promotion, or you just wanna, you know, whatever you're doing, don't tell anyone. All right, before you get there, all right? Don't tell them. Don't ever share what you're going to do with someone, all right? What you're gonna do. Show them the result. Show them the result. I shouldn't have said anything. And then people would have seen when the baby's growing, like my stomach getting bigger and bigger, and they would have said, are you pregnant? And I, then I could have said, yeah, I am. Show, show, don't tell. No, no show and tell, just show, no tell. Okay, that's your first step in, step in getting your shit together because if you feel like if you're going off, um, if you're trying to quit alcohol, right, and you tell everyone, you know what, people, I'm gonna give up drinking, you know, I've been drinking too heavy and I'm gonna just quit, I'm not gonna have another drink. And then you go off the wagon, how are you gonna feel? right when people ask you oh that's so great congratulations you know how are you doing not drinking you know then you have to explain it and you're going to feel more like a failure so that's a major 
number one step. Don't tell anyone. Show them. Show them. Don't tell. Okay, here's the second and the last step because I said there's only two. I'm not going to bore you with a very long video. of It's a two-step process. You don't change your life by climbing the mountain. You change your life by taking the first step toward the mountain. Okay? It's the little steps, the simple decisions in life, not the big altering decisions that will get your shit together. That will put you there, all right? It only takes one, one simple decision after another simple decision. If you tackle something, if you think something is so big, right? <clears throat> your chances are you're not going to do it. You're not going to follow through on it. If I put myself on some sort of, um, when I was trying to lose that weight, you know, I lost 60 pounds. If I went on some liquid diet or something, or my father-in-law, when he was alive, God rest his soul, his soul there, he went on a severe diet where he drank like water with lemon, squeezed lemon in it and a piece of toast for breakfast. Like how long do you think that you're gonna keep that up? It's the little decisions, the simple decisions you make every day that are gonna make the difference in the end. Not the big, you know, the big swearing that, oh, I'm gonna lose 50 pounds, just watch me. I'm going on this liquid diet. Look at Oprah. She went on some massive diet and lost a ton of pounds. She dragged all the weight she lost on her show, if you watch that show. And she was down to like 130 pounds from 200 something. And guess what happened to her? She gained the whole weight back, all right? Does it work out like that? Every day, if you're trying to stop drinking, you make a decision, a simple decision at that moment, not to take a drink, all right? Or like, if I'm trying to lose weight, I make a simple decision not to take that piece of cake, all right? Just one simple decision will change it. It doesn't have to be some, you know, like I said, if you see that mountain, that massive Mount Everest, you don't have to climb Mount Everest, okay? If you see everything as Mount Everest, you're never ever gonna go, you're never gonna do it, right? It's that one simple step that these simple decisions every each and every day that change your life that are game changers all right they were game changers for me I didn't have to like make a you know come out and like make a huge statement to the world or to myself you know that um, I'm gonna lose 60 pounds in fact when I lost the 60 pounds I never even said I'm gonna lose 60 pounds not even to myself I just said, you know what, I, I really have to lose weight. This is what I said, you know. So I'm gonna change some things. What can I change? Well, I'm not gonna eat dessert this week. I'm gonna wait till Saturday for, for sweets. I'm not gonna eat any sweets during the week. You know, so I can choose today, instead of having a chocolate cake, a piece of chocolate cake, I'm gonna have a granola bar. So I made that decision. And same with my exercising. I said, you know what? I'm out of shape, I'm gonna start exercising. But I, did I tell everyone or myself, oh, I'm gonna get a gym membership and I'm gonna work out two hours every day. No, nope. nope. Whatever you do, small, simple decisions, small baby steps. So I just said I need to lose some weight so I'm not gonna eat, I'm not gonna have any dessert this week. And then I lost a couple of pounds. Oh, and then I felt better after I made that decision. Wow, that wasn't so bad. Then the weekend I splurged. Then when Monday came, I said, you know what? I'm gonna do it again. I'm not gonna eat any dessert. Simple little decisions every day or like exercise. I started out very small. I didn't start doing like a half an hour of crunching and, and get a, you know, get a four. I really have a four pack, not a six pack. I didn't start out like that. I just said, I'm just going to try to do a few crunches. That's all. Just one simple decision. One simple baby step. That's it. You know, just, just a little step. 
And then it was hard in the beginning because I had never done it. Anything you, you try, just like when you diet, your, your stomach's going to growl. Why is your stomach going to growl? Because it's used to having more food. This happens to me all the time. When I was trying, when I was losing the weight, my stomach would be growling because it was used to so many calories and I was denying it what it was used to, you know? But as I cut back a little, just a little, my stomach started to shrink, then I wouldn't get as hungry because now I'd be used to less food. Same with the exercising or anything else you want to do, you know? Um, you start with a simple decision to start. That's it. It's that simple. I mean, really, it's not rocket science, people. You know, you just start out with a simple decision to start. Um, today, I'm going to start by, I'm going to drink less wine. You know, instead of, I'm not going to finish a second glass of wine. It can be like, like tiny little things, you know. Or today, I'm going to walk a little further. Um, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to plan to walk, but I'll, maybe I'll just walk for 15 minutes today. Maybe tomorrow, I'll walk for 20 minutes, you know. Just little things like that. Those are the things that are going to matter the most. Those are the things that you're going to stick with, all right? Taking that making that decision each day you can stick with that you can live with that instead of looking up at that tall mountain and going or saying to yourself you know i can't have any more skis or i have to go on this liquid diet or this like i don't know 500 calorie diet a day or some bizarre thing i don't know do you think you're ever going to stick with that no see what i'm saying so there you have it two simple steps i told you i did it you can do it. Not a long video. Not all this complicated things. That's it in a nutshell. Till next time, take care and have a great day. And remember, you can start right now. Right this instant. It's never too late. To work on your shit. To get yourself together. So long.